Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our uh, latest lecture session. So I believe we have been uh, looking at some math in the previous lecture session. So let's try to take the bigger picture and understand what we have been up to, right? Uh, we have been looking at applications of uh, material balances to various reactors, the three reactors being batch, plug flow and CSTR, right? And then we applied the particular mass balance equations on two different kinds of scenarios. So let's summarize them so that you have a picture of what it is that we are up to, right? So I guess I have a reference equation here which I am going to look at later, yes. So what have we been up to in general? I believe the first uh, example we looked at was an irreversible reaction A goes to 2B, if I am not wrong, right. And then we applied the material balance equation for the batch and what else? Plug flow and CSTR. And how did we do that? We identified the compound. So I believe initially we did the mass balance or the mass balance was on compound A, right? We then uh, wrote down the relevant mass balance equation. For example, what is it for batch reactor? I guess DC by DT is equal to rate of formation of the compound minus rate of loss. So we know the relative uh, rates of formation and loss, uh, loss of these compound here. Uh, what is this compound here? A it is not being formed so that is 0 and loss it is being lost so we wrote down the relevant uh, equations there. Uh, so quickly again uh, how can we relate these particular rates here? Uh, rate of the reaction will be equal to if I am not using the term loss I am just going to use the uh, rate of change of A by the stoichiometric coefficient of A then I need to use the term negative term here right. If not if I just use the term uh, rate of loss then it is just going to be rate of loss of A by stoichiometric coefficient of A, right? And this is what I have. So obviously rate of loss of A is equal to stoichiometric coefficient into rate of the reaction. And what is that in this case? Stoichiometric coefficient of A is 1, right? Into rate of the reaction is the rate constant times the concentration of compound A, right? I think we also use the different nomenclature in this case, maybe C a and this is what we have we went ahead and derived the relevant equation uh, for A and we solve for concentration of A uh, as it changes with time yes and then we also wanted to calculate how uh, the concentration of B changes with time right and how did we do that I guess so for that we applied uh, stoichiometry stoichiometry yes and what did we more or less do the we tried to look at uh, variation of this particular equation here, right, would be equal to rate of formation of B by the stoichiometric coefficient of B. And using uh, the variation here, we end up with a new equation from which we were able to calculate the concentration of compound B, right, as it changed with time. That is what we did. And with plug flow, it is just uh, replacing T with theta, and that is what we did here. And CSTR we had another equation that we derived right and we went ahead and did that. So once we got that done I believe in each case we also looked at uh, the check. Check is what is the uh, concentration of A when time is at 0 and also time is equal to infinity. So obviously when time is equal to 0 you should get CA equal to CA0 and CA should be equal to 0 at time equal to infinity right as A goes to 2B and at infinity right you are going to have all the A being consumed and that is what I believe we saw with uh, most of the equations here yes. And then uh, we moved ahead right and what did we end up uh, doing I guess we end up looking at an irreversible reaction yes we ended up looking at reversible reaction I am going to uh, summarize that here started looking at I guess so we looked at a reversible reaction here A goes to B and B again can transform to A right. So in this case though you are going to have uh, whenever you write DC by DT equal to rate of formation minus rate of loss right you are going to have both the terms formation and loss right. So thus we had issues with solving this and thus I believe once we applied stoichiometry we applied stoichiometry got the relevant equation I believe right and then we used the integrating factor 
right. And when can we use integrating factor? Let me refresh my memory dy by uh, dx plus y into function of x is equal to function of another function of x. So, when it is of this form, you can use the integrating factor and then we had the relevant solution for that and we went ahead and solved it, right. And I believe this is the equation that we end up getting. So, obviously, we transformed it with respect to k equilibrium, right. So, this is the equation that we end up getting. So, anyway, uh, math involved, but that is for your understanding, I guess. You obviously never need to mug such stuff up, right. You only need to understand the basics there, right. So, this is the equation that we have. And again, for this case too, what did we look at? We looked at uh, the case when time equal to 0, when time is equal to, I believe, infinity, right. And we also looked at, I believe, what would be the case when rate of uh, rate constant of the forward reaction is far greater than the rate constant of the backward reaction, right. We looked at that aspect too and what did that give us, I guess, it gave us the answer which will be relatively similar, I guess, to A goes to 2B or the reversible reaction. So, this is what we did in the last class and obviously, now we are going to continue with uh, this particular session here. So, we are still looking at example of A reversible reaction A going to B and B going to A again. So, we were done with our analysis with respect to our application with respect to the batch reactor, right. So, obviously, as you know for plug flow reactor at steady state, what is the only aspect that changes? So, if you look at the fundamental equation there that we derived for the batch reactor, it is rate of formation minus rate of loss dc by dt and here it is dc by d uh, theta is equal to rate of formation minus rate of loss. So, obviously, you will just need to replace time with hydraulic retention time in the case of the plug flow reactor, right. So, we obviously are not going to go into that in uh, detail here. So, moving on uh, we have the next case and what is that I guess that is the CSTR, CSTR, right. So, let us look at how to apply uh, the this particular case or CSTR case to your reversible reaction now. So, I am in general not good with uh, mugging up formula. So, let us see again uh, for the purpose of refreshing our memories too. How do we get the mass balance for your particular CSTR? Again, what is a CSTR? A continuously stirred tank reactor. You have flow coming in, you have flow going out, right, and you have concentration coming in and concentration going out. And what is the key here though? That the concentration going out is going to be the same as the concentration inside the reactor, right. And why is that? Because it is continuously mixed, right. So, as the system is continuously mixed, whatever is in the concentration of the compound inside the reactor is going to be the, the same as the concentration that is leaving the reactor, right. So, I believe uh, what is the mass balance equation I guess, right. Let us look at that V d c by d t is equal to q n c n minus q out c out plus volume into rate of formation minus rate of loss. So, at steady state and also uh, assuming that q in equal to q out otherwise the volume is going to change right and what this is going to be so 0 or I am going to divide by volume 2 right 0 equal to and q by v into c in minus c out plus rate of formation minus rate of loss and what is v by q that is theta or the hydraulic retention time, right. It gives you an idea about what does HRT give you an idea about? It gives you an idea about the average time let us say a water molecule spends in your reactor, right. Average time the water molecule spends in your reactor that is uh, uh, given by HRT, hydraulic retention time. So, V by Q theta here, right. So, uh, where are we here again? So, I am going to bring this particular term out to the left hand side. So, I am going to have C out minus C n and I guess by theta is equal to rate of formation of the compound minus the rate of loss of the compound. So, I guess uh, we are done with that and we are going to use that particular uh, equation here C out minus C n by theta is equal to rate of formation 
minus rate of loss right. So, here we are going to apply the mass balance on what is it now your uh, compound number A compound A pardon me and first obviously we need to define the rate of loss and rate of formation. So, what is the uh, rate of loss of your particular compound and rate of formation of your compound we again need to look at this particular reaction here right. So, rate of loss of the compound will be equal to the rate constant of the forward reaction times the concentration of A right rate of loss of the compound and rate of formation of the compound is going to be the rate constant of the backward reaction times the concentration of B right because how is A being lost when A goes to B and how is A being formed when B goes to A. So, these are the relevant reactions here. So, let us uh, plug them in here please. So, C out minus C in by theta is equal to uh, rate of formation of this particular compound where is that please it is here rate constant K B into concentration of B let us say I am going to use these terms now right minus uh, where is the rate of loss here and that is here K forward into concentration of A and one minor aspect we obviously look, uh, need to look at is that this concentration of A is going to be equal to this variable C out right because as we just discussed whatever is inside the reactor will be the same as the one going out of the reactor right. So, I am going to modify that. So, C or concentration of A minus C naught or C n by theta equal to K B C B minus K F into C A. So, this is where we are and what have we been doing up to I guess uh, we cannot solve this equation because we have two independent variables here C B and C A right and C n is a known value or the initial concentration is a known value. So, what do we do? We look again look at stoichiometry right and what is that I guess C A minus C A naught or C n by stoichiometry coefficient 1 will be equal to C B minus C B naught right by the stoichiometric coefficient which is again 1. So, this is what we have and so uh, let us try to write this down on a fresh sheet of uh, uh, the board and then take this through. So, C A minus C A naught by theta is equal to K B C B K B C B minus K F concentration of A and what is the stoichiometry uh, minus of C A minus C A naught is equal to obviously going to be equal to C B minus C B naught right. So, let us try to transform this and uh, solve for our particular equation. So, what I need to calculate I need to calculate C B. So, C B is going to be minus C A plus C A naught right plus C B naught. Uh, let us see if I uh, made any petty mistakes please. C B I just took the C B naught term to the left hand side and open up the brackets minus C A and plus C A naught looks like I am on the right track right. So, again we substitute that here C A minus C A naught by theta is equal to the rate constant of the backward reaction times this particular term and what is that C A naught plus C B naught minus C A right minus the rate constant of the forward reaction times the concentration of A in the reactor right and let us try to uh, uh, solve for this I guess right C A minus C A naught is equal to K B into theta into C A naught plus C B naught minus C A minus K F theta C A right. So, if I am trying to bring all the uh, terms with respect to C A to the left hand side and the other terms to the right hand side. So, C A is going to be here and where are the other C A terms plus K B theta C A and again plus K F theta C A is going to be equal to C A naught right 
plus k b theta into c a naught plus c b naught right and then obviously uh, solving for c a what is that going to end up with I guess c a is going to be equal to c a naught plus k b theta times c a naught plus c b naught by and what else do we have here 1 plus theta into k b plus k f. So, let us uh, just review what we have been up to. So, this equation is from stoichiometry right uh, change in a and change in b we are relating that here and I believe we substitute that in our basic mass balance equation right and that is what we see here C B equal to C B naught C A naught and minus C A that is what we just did here and we still have the other terms and transforming that and taking theta to the right hand side C A minus C A naught equal to K B into theta C A naught plus C B naught minus C A minus K F theta into C A. Again uh, what do we say transforming the equation such that we have all the terms with respect to C A on the left hand side we have C A plus K B theta into C A right again plus k f theta into c a is equal to c a naught taking this term to the right hand side plus k b theta into c a naught plus c b naught and here I guess we have c a equal to c a naught plus k b theta c a naught plus c b naught by 1 plus theta into k b plus k f right. So, we, we have this. So, now we need to do our checks again and what are our usual checks? We check when time is at 0 what is our situation? So, how does this equation uh, transform into when time equals 0 C A equal to C A naught plus not time pardon me here it is the hydraulic retention time right when theta equal to 0 C A naught plus as theta is 0 plus 0 by 1 plus 0. So, that is equal to C A naught. So, that is a check and we are done with that right and what is the case when theta is equal to infinity. So, let us see what happens there. So, C A is equal to C A naught plus ok. Now, we have a unique situation here we have infinity by infinity right. So, how do we go about solving this? I guess here uh, whenever you have this particular situation when you are trying to look at the limit of a particular uh, what we say uh, equation and you have it in the form of either 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity. So, we are going to consider the orbitals rule right and we consider the orbitals rule obviously when we are trying to look at the limit of particular variable and we are ending up with 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity. So, I believe we discussed that uh, we need to look at the derivative of the per numerator and denominator with respect to the relevant variable. So, here I am going to write down uh, derivative of numerator and that is equal to what now? What is the numerator here please? C A naught plus K B theta uh, into C A naught. So, this is the numerator here. So, derivative with respect to theta will leave us with with respect to theta will leave us with K B into C A naught plus C B naught right and derivative and what is the limit I guess what is the limit of the numerator once we have taken the derivative and that is going to be the uh, uh, same case here right as we apply theta equal to infinity that is the same case here and what is the uh, limit not limit pardon me derivative of the denominator with respect to theta that is going to be k b plus k f right and that again is the limit at infinity to at theta equal to infinity right. So, let us see uh, what do we have here now I am going to continue this here for sake of our understanding. Uh, so, what do we have here we have the limit at theta equal to infinity for c a is going to be equal to k b into c a naught plus c b naught right 
by k b plus k f. So, this is our a particular concentration of A at obviously at equilibrium I guess right or at theta is equal to infinity. Uh, so, let us try to work out one other uh, particular set and then move on. So, I need to rewrite this particular equation in the next uh, uh, board I guess right. So, it is equal to C A is equal to C A naught plus K B times theta is it into C A naught plus C B naught by 1 plus theta into k b plus k f I believe right right. And so, the next aspect that we are going to look at obviously, is that when it is a irreversible reaction let us say uh, we are now considering a goes to b and so on and b goes to a again. So, if it were an irre irreversible reaction what does that mean that the k forward reaction is going to be far greater than the k backward reaction right. So, let us see what we are going to have in that case I guess. So, it is going to be C A is equal to C A naught plus uh, let us say maybe can I call this 0 yeah I will call this 0 1 plus theta into K B plus K F will just be K F right. So, that is going to be equal to C A naught by 1 plus theta into k f right. So, if we look at what our case was uh, for our irreversible reaction a goes to 2 b it should be relatively similar to what we just derived right. So, we now looked at the specific case when k forward is far greater than k backward yes and with that we end ahead with our particular uh, case and you know try to look at the situation and we end up with a set of variables that is more or less same as with respect to our example when we looked at the irreversible case of A goes to 2 B right. So, now we will move on to the last aspect right uh, in kinetics and the next aspect I guess or the major aspect we are going to uh, discuss after this session is going to be accident base. But before we move on to the accident base relevant chemical process we are going to have to wrap up the aspects with respect to determining let us say rate equations as in the practical relevance is that let us say you conducted some experiment and with respect to time let us say you have the uh, data with respect to or of concentration let us say right. And let us say you know you do not have uh, the relevant knowledge about uh, what is the form of this equation as in what uh, what is the mathematical uh, what do we say equation that would best represent this particular uh, data now right or you do not know which particular order it is that the uh, of the reaction I guess right. So, how do you go about those aspects let us say or how do you use the data to be able to come up with your form of your particular equation now right. And also once you come up with the form of your equation let us say you also rarely will have the relevant rate constants let us say right or how would you go about calculating the relevant rate constant or your observed rate constant let us say from the given data now right. So, this is what we are going to discuss from a particular example, but we are going to obviously have a brief uh, overview of what it is we are going to be up to. Right. So, here we are going to talk about determination of rate equations of rate equations. In this context we have two aspects right one would be let us say uh, determining the form of the equation or the reaction let us say right and the second one would be determining the rate coefficients let us say. right. So, let us say uh, we are going to obviously look at the example in relation to what we are up to here, but again keep in mind that we are looking at a particular case when let us say we have concentration versus time data for a particular experiment let us say either something that you observed out there in the nature or something that you conducted in the lab right. And then you are trying to let us say you do not have the enough uh, what do we say uh, uh, background let us say or there is nothing available in the available literature let us say that suggests what the order of this particular uh, reaction is going to be let us say right. So, then how are you going to be able to come up with your particular uh, what do we say order now right. So, you are going to try to fit uh, various models right to your particular uh, data and then look at which model would be the best fit and from that obviously, you will be able to look at your particular form of the reaction or the equation right. And then obviously, let us say you know uh, the example I guess I have is something relevant to uh, 
uh, r equal to kc to the power of n now let us say right. And now what I am talking about is let us say I do not know what the order of this particular reaction is let us say. So, how do I do that? So, I have concentration versus time data right and I am going to let us say modify this into such a way that I have concentration or you know now I need rate versus time data. I am going to come up with a way to be able to what we say calculate rate and how do I calculate rate let us say right. It depends obviously upon what reactor or the system it is I guess right. So, if it is a batch reactor and it is only first order loss. So, the rate would then as we are going to look at it is going to be similar to or equal to uh, minus dc by dt. If it is let us say uh, uh, what is this now a CSTR or a completely mixed flow reactor it is going to be dc by d theta right not dc by d theta but that is for a plug flow reactor I guess right. And then obviously for the uh, again the CSTR you have the relevant equation but obviously it is not a differential equation I guess right. So, uh, depending upon the type of reactor you can come up with the relevant rate and then from modify the relevant data. So, that you can now have instead of concentration versus time you will now be able to calculate rate and uh, the relevant uh, time right. And then you can fit this particular data let us say or you know in this case looks like in this equation obviously it is rate versus concentration. I can fit this particular data as in rate and uh, what do we say concentration or I can fit the model pardon me to the data right and they get the uh, form of the uh, equation by looking at let us say which particular what do we say values would give me the best fit right. So, that is one aspect and let us say once I do that let us say and I can now what do we say know the order of the reaction let us say right. Then I can round this off to the relevant order right and then be able to more accurately predict the value of my k here right. So, again there are two approaches you can either do rate versus time right or rate versus concentration approach or I can do the concentration versus time approach right. So, again uh, these aspects I guess obviously would uh, hopefully be clearer when we look at the relevant example. So, let us move look at the example that we have. So, looks like we have some data right in a batch reactor the key that is that you know from a batch reactor in which the contaminant is being removed let us say the key is that it is being removed now right. So, before we go further let us apply the mass balance right. So, we know the generic form of the mass balance let us apply that here. Right. So, what do we know? We know that V dc by dt right is equal to q in c in minus q out c out plus volume into rate of formation minus rate of loss right. But here obviously, it is a batch reactor right batch reactor. So, obviously, q in c in and q out c out would be 0 there is no flow coming in or going out right. And now, I am just left with dc by dt is equal to rate of formation minus rate of loss. And here the key is again that the contaminant is only being removed. So, now what do I end up with that dc by dt is equal to minus rate of loss right or that rate of loss is equal to minus dc by dt right. So, this is the key that we understand or you know or we need to be able to garner I guess right from the particular uh, scenario here right. Again uh, it obviously depends upon the kind of reactor and the scenario in each case right. And so, the first aspect which we are going to look at is let us say you know if you are trying to fit the model to an equation similar to this uh, rate equation let us say right. And I want to do uh, now be able to calculate the fractional order of the reaction as in what is this n now. I do not know what this is I just have the data for concentration and time. So, I, this is the data that we have time in hours and concentration in milligram per liter let us say right. So, but I need to be able to calculate the order of that particular uh, reaction let us say right. So, now how do I go about that now right. So, there are different ways. So, if you had sufficient background or let us say if you have were able to find relevant literature let us say you can obviously find the order of the reaction from that particular uh, literature right available literature. But if not what can you do you are going to let us say conduct regression right. So, here obviously we have a new term we are going to look at what that is you are going to conduct regression or uh, you know you, what does this mean now that you are going to fit what do we say or look for the model that best fits this data of time versus concentration. And from that you will be able to calculate the value of n I guess. So, how are the, how would I fit my model to this particular r equal to kc to the power of n now right. So, there are different ways rudimentary ways as in if you are looking at approximation I can look at any two data sets let us say and then you know manipulate it or substitute and get some value of k and some value of n right. But obviously, the issue with this with such an approach is that right you are not considering all the data now as in your experimental values or your experimentally determined values will have either analytical errors or you know errors due to the uh, what do we say uh, due to the analyst itself I guess right due to the working of the analyst let us say 
there are many errors that can creep in here, right. So, to take that into account what is the best approach obviously, you would like to look at an approach that would consider all the data set, right. So, in that case we are going to look at regression I guess, right. And how do we go about that, right. The approach is obviously to look at the model that would best fit the data now, right. So, as in I have what do we say y as a function of x, right. This is my actual value or true value now. So, let us say I come up with my model value or let us say y i, let us say, right. What would be the model that would be able to predict, right, uh, values that would be uh, similar, let us say, or would be the best fit, I guess, right, for your particular uh, experimental values, that is the key here. So, the approach here is more or less that you will minimize the sum of squares, sum of squares, right. And what is the sum of squared error? It is the sum of squared error, I guess, sum of squared error is equal to obviously nothing but the model value or the error, I guess, right, between the model and the actual value raised to the power of 2, right. Again, you are calculating the error, right, and those values which will minimize this error let us say would be the uh, would conform to the best fit model right. So, that is the key, but obviously we could have just looked at the magnitude and why are we taking the square here one uh, aspect is that the error can be positive or negative. So, to be able to rule that out let us say or to take that into account we are squaring it, but that can also be done by just looking at the magnitude right, but we look at the square so that I guess or we consider the square let us say because you want to look at the or give enough weightage to the outliers too right. Anyway, so let us look at the example now what do we have here. I have to calculate the fractional order of the reaction using R equal to Kc by Rn or Kc to the power of n. I know that Rl equal to dc by dt now, right. So, because my equation is R versus C, right, I need to be able to garner or gather data, right, as in here I have only time and concentration, but my model is R equal to Kc to the power of n. So, now I need to come up with the rate, let us say, at each of these particular uh, uh, sampling time I guess, right. So, how do we able to calculate that as we just looked at it in the previous slide it is going to be equal to minus dc by dt, right. So, let us uh, switch over to excel and get this done, right, ok. So, here I guess I set some stuff up. So, now I am going to have to calculate the rate. So, it is going to be equal to uh, this particular cell. So, here I guess they have different data points, right and obviously I need to look at uh, what we say difference it is dc by dt. So, here I am going to look at the numerical difference obviously, right. So, it is going to be uh, equal to bracket and so I am going to look at the difference obviously, I guess, right. So, it is going to be the forward differential here this minus this and bracket close divided by again bracket start right minus this and bracket close, right. So, what do we have here? We just calculated the difference dc by dt, I guess, right. So, this particular c2 minus c1, right, by uh, t2 minus t1, that is what I have here. So, enter and, but I should not get this done, uh, what do we say, just use the same forward differential method for all the other, what do we say, data points, because in general forward or backward differential, which we are going to look at, let us say, will lead to compounding of the errors I guess, right. Here we are going to have to calculate dc by dt and we are going to obviously look at uh, the numerical uh, difference here delta c by delta t I guess, right. So, but the key here is that uh, obviously because of lack of data we are going for uh, the ex at the extreme cases, right, at time equal to 0 and time equal to 15 uh, for the backward and uh, forward and backward differential respectively. But in general if you look at the Taylor's polynomial and look at the relevant uh, error I guess right you will see that the central differential is relatively uh, better right. So, let us look at the central differential for this I guess is equal to. So, uh, bracket minus bracket close divided by bracket close and enter. So, what have we done here? We have looked at the central uh, difference as in for with respect to time equal to 1, I looked at uh, concentration at time equal to 2 uh, minus let us say uh, the 1 at time equal to 0 by t 2 minus t 0 I guess, right. So, enter. So, I am going to try to copy the cells uh, the same what do we say here, right. So, that is what uh, we have here and enter please. And, but for the last cell obviously, you know, here we do not have enough data to be able to look at the uh, uh, 
uh, what do we say this uh, central differential right or center differential. So, I am going to have to delete this cells and delete and so it is going to be equal to. So, instead of, instead of central differential I am obviously going to look at the backward differential here right. So, that is going to be equal to bracket start this minus this divided by minus enter okay. So, now for these two data sets right uh, data points anyway I looked at uh, forward and backward differential and for all these data sets right I looked at central differential right. So, again here the uh, dc by dt is negative. So, obviously as we calculated earlier rate equal to minus dc by dt. So, that is going to be equal to minus 1 1 into enter. So, the rate I guess right and I have the same here and now let us say what is it I need to do here now. I have the rate yes I need to be able to calculate a modal value of my rate right. So, again what is the approach here I am going to uh, let us say it is a trial and error you can understand that I guess. So, I need to supply a some initial value for the constants of what is this now k and m right. So, I am going to supply some initial value of uh, for the k and m right uh, for the rate constant and the order right and then be able to calculate my rate uh, model rate. So, for m let us say I will start with uh, 2 enter and for k let us say I will start with uh, 0 0.5 right. And obviously, they should be uh, at hopefully at least within the range of the uh, expected values anyway otherwise solver is going to have to, uh, what we say difficulty in getting that right. So, that is equal to now. So, what is my uh, rate model here right. So, let me go back to our particular slide here right and let us see where we are here rate is equal to k c to the power of n right. So, it is going to be equal to this cell uh, into and the concentration is here c to the power of n n is out here right and enter and obviously, I can drag drop this right. But obviously, if I do so right you know I am going to get an error because when I do so it is going to use the successive cells. So, I need to keep the relevant cells or k and n values or cells constant. So, k here is k 2 so uh, dollar symbol and again dollar symbol. And for also the n value or n cell corresponding to n, so dollar symbol. And again, one second, please, and dollar symbol, enter. And so now let us see what we end up with, okay. And now you see that this cell does not change, but the one corresponding to c changes, right. So I am just keeping the cells relevant to this uh, rate constant and order the same, so enter. So now I calculate the error, right, that is equal to the uh, what do we say, the rate, actual rate right minus the model rate and enter and let us say now I need to just be able to drag drop this right and this square of the error is equal to uh, bracket I guess okay bracket close to the power of 2 and enter right and now I need to be able to calculate the uh, sum of squared errors or sum of all these uh, errors. So, that is going to be equal to sum of this and enter right. So, now I have a uh, sum of squared errors calculated for a trial value of uh, the two uh, variables that I am trying to find. The two variables are k and m. So, I started out with the trial value of 0.5 and 2 right and then I calculated the sum of squared errors right. Uh, error how did we calculate that just between the actual rate. Uh, the error or the difference between the actual rate that we measured let us say right and the model rate based on the relevant uh, constants that you chose as a trial right. So, here I guess uh, we are going to look at data analysis right data and then go to solver right. So, Excel has this particular add in let us say right uh, if you are, do not have this particular add in you can just go to uh, options in Excel and then add in and add this uh, solver and data analysis tool pack right if you do not already have that installed I guess right and how does this help us now right. So, here I have sum of square a value for sum of squared error for a particular value of these two variables which are uh, rate constant and the order right. So, solver let us say I will help me in let us say 
changing in or try uh, going by trial and error I guess change the values of k and n such that the sum of squared error is going to be minimum right. So, let us look at that I guess. So, the target cell I guess is going to have to be g 11. So, that is set and I want to have a minimum let us say right uh, the value needs to be the minimum it can be by changing which cells now by changing k and n cells right. So, let us say solve okay and I guess it is solve for it and I came up with some particular solution here, but because let us say my initial values were way too off I guess right uh, looks like I have a relevant uh, what do we say uh, erroneous values. So, I will try it out with what is a new set of values I guess right because I know the k cannot be negative right. So, there are many aspects. So, let us go with k to be 0.5 okay and let us say n to be around let us say 1 right and now let us run solver again. So, that you know I am just starting with the trial value now right earlier I guess solver had issues converging on solution, but you do know that the rate constant cannot be uh, negative right. So, here again I am uh, trying to uh, assist the solver in arriving at the solution right or get converging at the solution. So, I am choosing values let us say which now let us say have a smaller uh, sum of squared errors right. So, the closer you start to the true value the easier it is for uh, solver to be able to solve this. So, I am going to repeat that right and I guess everything else is going to be said the same right ok and I am going to say solve and I guess now I have the relevant values. So, now you see that the sum of squared errors is the minimum it can be 120.8 I guess and for which values is it minimum looks like for values of k to be 0 0.28 uh, or 229 and n value of 0 0.91 right. So, I guess here we are done with the first part of our question. So, let us go back to the question again right. So, what does it ask us to calculate? calculate the fractional order of the reaction using r equal to kc to the power of n. So, how did we go about that? We had time and concentration, we calculated what do we say dc by or minus dc by dt right which is the rate and then we calculated rate modeled right and how did we do that? By assuming some value of rate constant and fractional order let us say or order of the reaction we calculated that, we calculated the error, error square and then calculated the sum of these squared errors right and then we asked excel to change the values of k and n to be able to minimize this value of sum of squared errors right. So, from that what values have we arrived at? So, k we arrived at to be 0 0.29, k we have 0 0.29 and n to be 0 0.91 I guess right. So, in general I guess this is the experimentally observed fractional order, but you know that theoretical values usually they are integers let us say right. So, obviously I need to round that off right. So, the theoretical value should be 1 I guess right. So, let us look at the second aspect now and look at how to go about that right. And the second aspect I guess obviously says you know obviously we need to round the fractional order to the nearest integer right and that is what we did here. Uh, now, the n or order is equal to 1 right. So, now what is the rate equation r equal to? k c right. So, this is what we have now right to the nearest integer and calculate the rate coefficient. So, now that I change the value of n I mean we have I guess k value we got to be 0 0.29 and n to be around 0 0.9 right. But now I am changing the value to what would be a reasonable value right m I know should be 1 right uh, if it is near about uh, 0 0.9 and now what is now the value of k right that will again be or you know uh, or lead to the best fit model again right. So, that is something that I need to do now right, but the question I guess what does it uh, ask us to do? It again asks us to calculate the rate coefficient or the rate constant k using a concentration based approach though, not r versus c, but r c versus let us say time though. And also I guess we have two aspects to look at linearized and non-linear regression I guess right. So, let us look at what it is that uh, we need to uh, consider I guess right. So, before we go further I guess we need to understand that the form of this equation is dc by dt equal to minus rate of loss right. So, to be able to look at the concentration based approach obviously I need to modify my particular uh, equation here. So, dc by dt equal to minus rate of loss, but from my particular calculations so now I know it is equal to kc right. So, that is equal to minus kc right. And for this I guess we know that the I solve for this from 0 to t it is going to be equal to ct is equal to ct is equal to c naught into e power minus kt right 
and why is that again this is a batch reactor and from my calculations that I know that the uh, rate of loss is equal to Kc and first order. So, for the for that first order I plugged in the relevant case and saw that Ct not saw that I guess you know we did look at this particular case earlier too and it is straightforward too. The solution would be after integration Ct equals C0 into e power minus Kt. So, here now we have two approaches to consider right. So, one is asking for the linearized approach right and the other for the non-linearized right. So, linearized as in now I have Ct equal to C0 into e power minus Kt this is the form of my particular uh, equation. So, I guess regression there are different ways right you can transform this equation to make it linear. So, how can I do that let us say I know Ct by C0 equal to e power minus Kt right. So, natural logarithm of Ct by C0 is equal to minus Kt. So, now it is it is linearized and I can conduct the regression on these aspects I guess right. So, what would I conduct the regression on I would conduct the regression on let us say Ct by C0 in one particular set of data and time in one particular set of data right and I am going to repeat the same approach right calculating the error and so on and so forth and then I guess I will calculate the what do you say Ct by C0 model right for which uh, how would I do that I need to assume some value of k right it is going to be equal to minus k t right and I have time here. So, I can calculate the model value of C t by C naught right. I need to obviously for that assume a value of k. So, I am going to go ahead with that. So, once I have the true C t by C naught and what we see model value of C t by C naught I can then calculate the error or the difference between them right and then the square of the error right and then I will calculate again the sum of squared errors right the sum of all these squares and then again what am I going to do I am going to ask a solver right to let us say minimize this particular sum of squared errors right this particular cell by changing this cell of k right. So, again let us uh, go ahead with that approach here and let us say I have uh, set it up in 2 here right. So, let us say this is equal to ln so I am taking the natural logarithm of what we see here I am going to assume uh, C naught is going to be a constant. So, right it is C t is first this case this divided by 195 and bracket close and enter. So, what am I doing here I am just calculating natural logarithm of C by C naught right. So, same case here I just use the same what do we say uh, equation here for all the uh, cells here. So, now obviously I need to be able to calculate the model the what do we say uh, natural logarithm of C by C naught for that obviously I need to choose some value of k. So, I will start with let us say the value that we had earlier that is equal to 0 0.29 I guess right or 28 anyway that is fine. So, let us go with equal to minus uh, k times t and where is t into time here right and obviously I need to keep the cell constant with respect to the uh, k and so I have to say uh, control z dollar symbol. So, I guess this helps me in keeping the cell constant again dollar symbol right. So, enter ok and I am going to use the same formula here. So, now I have that here right and again why did we have a enter please uh, ok and why are we looking at minus kt as we looked at it here right. We know that uh, what is it now uh, natural logarithm of ct by c naught equal to minus kt right to be able to calculate the model value of natural logarithm of ct by c naught I am assuming some value of k and then calculating this model value of ct by c naught right. So, that is the approach and that is what I have here and the uh, I have a trial and error or what do we say trial value of uh, k here and so the error obviously is equal to the difference between these two values minus enter. So, I am going to use the same here and then is equal to this cell to the power of 2 right and now let us say uh, this is equal to the sum. of all these yes enter and this is the sum of squared errors. So, again now I am trying to be able trying to calculate the rate constant that would give the least sum of squared 
uh, errors, right? What would that mean? That would mean that the k value would be closer to the true value, right? So let us try to approximate that again go back to solver, right? And then the target cell is obvious to this error, right? And it has to be the minimum and by changing which cell I guess, right? It has to be k2, okay? It seems like it is set at k2, right? Okay? And I am going to ask it to solve it, right? F11 and k2, okay? Solve and looks like I end up with a value of 0 0.21 and now you see that the error has decreased I guess, right? And so you now you see that we start out with what do we say a value of uh, k to be around 0 0.29 but looks like the model or the value that would best fit the given data would be your value of uh, 0 0.21 I guess, right? So let us just uh, write that down here before we move on, right? So from linearized we have a value of k to be 0 0.21, right? So now for non-linear approach I guess, non-linear approach as in I am going to what we say not transform this equation any further. So I have C t equal C naught into e power minus k t, right? And let us say I am going to uh, look at this particular case, right? And then uh, what do we say without transformation, just look at the relevant value of k, come up with C t modeled, right? And how do I calculate C t model here? If I take some trial value of k, I know C0 or I am taking C0 in this case to be a constant which is a good enough uh, what do we say assumption or if you want to you can also assume that C0 is also variable let us say uh, but in general the first value that you have let us say is something uh, is is something let us say in which you have greater confidence let us say right. So if you want to you can also have C0 as a variable or let us say in this case we are going to have C0 as a constant. So from that let us say and plugging in some trial value of k and I know different values of t right. I can calculate my CT model, right? And I already have CT, the concentration experimental values already given. Again, I'll calculate the error, error square, and so on and so forth. So let's move on. So here, I guess I set it up, right? So that's is equal to C naught is 195 into uh, capital E XP. So exponential of minus. And I need to take some trial value of k, so I guess I uh, will refer to this cell and I am going to change the letter into and uh, time here bracket close and also we need to edit it such that I am going to keep the cell constant uh, dollar symbol here and again dollar symbol enter and k value let us say again I am going to start with my trial to be around 0 0.29, right? Okay, and then I am going to just copy this here. So here we have the model values for this based on let us say uh, what do we say this particular trial value of k, right? And then error is nothing but the difference of these two cells, right? Equal to minus this and enter and error is equal to this to the power of 2 and now sum of squared errors equal to sum of all these cells, right? Enter. So again, what do I need to do again? I need to change the value of k so that I will get the minimum value of this uh, sum of squared error, right? So again, uh, I need to go back to solver, right? And then let us say I am going to look at this particular cell. Okay, I need to change E11, the minimum value. I am looking for the minimum. How do I get that? By changing I3, I guess, right? Okay, looks like it is set and I am going to solve for it. Okay, keep solver solution and now looks like I have an error of for an error of 152, let us say the k value is around 0.19 I guess, right? Okay, so now for this particular uh, non-linearized uh, what do you say regression, I have value of 0. Point, I believe 19, right? Okay, 19, 0.19 I guess, right? So I guess the depending on the approach you do have what do we say minor uh, variations in the model value, right? But if you want to uh, compare two models, how would you do that I guess, right? You are going to look at the sum of squared errors, right? And choose that uh, particular model which would give you the uh, least sum of squared errors. For example, here we have two rate constants, right? Uh, 0 0.21 and 0 0.19 and which one would you choose now? For that obviously you are going to look at let us say the uh, model or that model which will give you the least sum of uh, squared errors. So let us look at the uh, sum of squared errors for this uh, I believe sheet 3 is corresponds to the non-linearized model I guess, right? So here k was uh, uh, 
0.194 and sum of squared errors was 152. Let us look at the other case. So, here I guess k was 0 0.21 uh, for the linearized model anyway and for uh, the sum of squared errors is 0 0.43, but we cannot compare that like for like because here the error corresponds to natural logarithm of c by c naught. So, let us just calculate the c mod for this particular k value c t equal to c naught is in this case 195 right into exponential of minus k times right and k the cell is a constant. So, I will have to set it accordingly right into t right and t is here. So, I am going to say that is the case and enter and copy that here right and now I need to calculate the error for this particular case. So, again why am I calculating the error because I want to be have a like for like comparison of the sum of squared errors. So, in this non-linearized model we had the case for C t and calculate the error accordingly. So, here too I am calculating C t or the C model I guess right. So, the error square I am going to calculate the error square uh, directly let us say here right is equal to C model 1 minus the actual right to the power of 2 right and then if I drag drop that and here is going to be the sum of squared errors right sum of squared errors yes. And so, here as you see the error sum of squared errors with this uh, linearized model this is for the linearized model right is 404 for value of uh, rate constant of uh, 0.21 I guess. But as you see here for a value of a rate constant of 0 0.19 looks like uh, the sum of squared errors is lower which is 152 in this case and thus I guess the non-linearized regression actually gives us a better uh, or the best fit uh, model I guess right. So, here I guess I have a few graphs that uh, I would like to look at. So, let us go back to sheet 1 right. So, this is a particular case right. Let us try to understand what we have been up to. So, here I guess the uh, blue what do we say data sets correspond to the experimental values or the measured values right. These two uh, what do we say data sets and the rate or the red dot let us say or the rate model correspond to what we have let us say based on the values of k and n being what do we say 0 0.29 and n being 0 0.9 right. So, again you can look at that right rate model I guess right. So, again as you see now right what is it that solver helped us do? It helped us what do we say come up with a set of uh, what do we say constants that would best approximate the experimental data which is the blue data point. For example, let us say if I change the value of k let us see how this data changes. Let us go with 0.35 ok and now you see that the model values let us say are what do we say further away from uh, what do we say the experimental values. Let us increase k further to 0 0.5 let us say. So, 0 0.5 again you see now further I guess there is what we say deviation from the experimental value which is the blue data and the red data set which is the model data set. And again at the same time you see that the error has uh, you know kept on increasing I guess right. So, let us go back to I think what was our value 0 0.28 I guess right 0 0.28 ok. So, now you see I guess the error is minimum right and also even graphically now or visually you can see that uh, the model data set and the experimental data set are what do we say in consonance with each other. Again uh, to illustrate this let us let us say uh, change n to let us say 2 and now you see that you know that uh, makes no sense because the order I guess uh, is now 2 rather than 1. So, let us go with 1 right. So, if we chose just n equal to 1 and k to be the same value of 0.29 you still see that there is considerable error right you know, but you know that the order of the reaction at least the theoretical value needs to be uh, what we say an integer. So, thus we rounded off n to 1 instead of choosing 0 0.9 and then we calculated the k value which would again see to it that this data set would what we say or uh, k value which would be the best fit and I think we did that in sheet 2. So, here I have the data set right and let us say I am going to drop this here. So, here we have let us say natural logarithm of c t by c naught versus time right that is what I have here. Blue data set is the true data or the experimental data and red data I guess is the uh, model data right and so that is what you see here 
right even here let us say let us change different values of k and see how it changes let us go with 0.29 right and you see that there is deviation from the data let us go with 0.1 right and again you see a deviation from the experimental values which is the blue value right. So, the true value of k right would give you a data set or a model of the data which would see to it that the error or the difference between uh, or the sum of squared errors uh, when you look at it with respect to the model data and the experimental data is going to be minimum right. So, let us go back to I think what was our value 0.21. Okay, so, now you see that this is minimum I guess right. So, at the same time I also calculate C t and this is the graph right. So, now let us go back to non-linearized uh, what do we say uh, regression right and same case here. So, here instead of the natural logarithm of C t by C naught we looked at C versus time. So, again we end up with a value of 0.195 I guess right and for that again the graph we have a graph here between the modal value and the uh, true value right. Again visually too you can say judge that let us say. Uh, it is uh, a pretty good fit, but how can you quantify that? You can quantify that by saying that you know the sum of squared errors is uh, less or the minimum. So, let us just try uh, two trials here 0 0.29 let us say let us try 0 0.29 and you see that you know the model value now does not approximate the true values well. Let us go for a lesser value of 0 0.1 right and now again you see the further shift to the other side of this set of data right. And here I have the relevant aspects I guess right. Uh, can I go back to the true value ok. So, this is the true value and you would have observed that the, the true, uh, true or the best fit value I guess the sum of squared errors would be minimum right. So, if I also want to uh, look at uh, what do we say different aspect let us say uh, what do we say Excel has a few built in options let us say with respect to trend line. So, if you can go to that let us say you can choose either between a linear or exponential model, but obviously it has a limited set of models and then it can calculate let us say what we say based on again the same approach of regression the value of the relevant variables right. But obviously again uh, you know that is going to be uh, slightly different from what would be the true value, but this is the approach for regression that any uh, model or built in model would use right. Again another approach would also go to uh, say data analysis, data analysis and let us say this will not work for non-linear. So, let me look at linear approach and uh, you know demonstrate some other aspect. So, I am going to go to data and data analysis and let us say I will need to go to regression ok and regression. So, input y range I think here we were trying to look at uh, uh, what is it now natural logarithm of C t by C naught and what is it now the time I guess right. And here again I can input the relevant values, values let us say and then calculate again based on regression the relevant aspects here again right. So, let us try to get that done I guess right. So, input y will be I guess C t by uh, C naught right. So, y range I guess was the uh, concentration. So, I am going to say y data set right and ok it should have been natural logarithm of C by C naught delete please. So, we are looking at the linearized version here right and so obviously I need to give the linear data or linearized data natural logarithm of C by C naught and x range was I guess uh, what was the x range it should have been minus k times t. So, I need to calculate that before I uh, go further right or I can give t though that should uh, also work right and ok. So, output range I am going to ask the data to be given somewhere here ok and I also want to have let us say uh, residuals I guess right and residual line plots that is fine. And so, here again there is a built in tool, but usually works only uh, what do we say for linearized forms. So, for that I am going to look at uh, demonstrating how to get that done. So, here I guess I have the output right and look let us look at the values here right. So, intercept I guess came out to be what is it now uh, 0.11 and x variable which is your what do we say rate constant is around your uh, 0.22 right. So, here again uh, you see that this rate constant right again approaches uh, the value that we calculated here which was around 0.214 right and that is what you see here right. So, again in the form of y equal to m x plus c right we see that the m is the slope here and if you look at that natural logarithm of c t by c naught equal to minus k t right and in that case I guess k is nothing but your slope here and that is the slope which is the x variable which is minus 
0.22 but you know it is minus kt model so it is the k is 0.22 right. But here uh, the model considered an intercept that is why our x variable was different from what we calculated by our what do we say fundamental approach. So, in your particular data analysis or regression when you went there or when we went through that if we set the intercept to be 0 I would have gotten the true value to be closer to the value of 0.21 I guess. So, different approaches but this approach that we have looked at is the fundamental value I guess right. So, I guess with that we are done with the aspects related to kinetics right and now I guess from the next session we are going to move on to acids and bases right. Again kinetics give us an idea about how uh, fast let us say a system or a process uh, what we say goes through I guess right and in that context today what did we look at let us say in the second uh, part of the session let us say we looked at let us say how to fit part, a particular uh, data let us say pardon me not a data a model to a particular set of data and get the relevant constants so that they approach the true values and for that what approach have we looked at we looked at regression I guess right. So, I have set of data I want to calculate the relevant variables for the best fit how do I do that by minimizing the sum of squared errors I guess right. So, I guess with that I will be done for today and thank you.